Hi FlossTube, my name's Jody, and I'm Trixie Tricycle here on YouTube and also on Instagram. And I am also the dyer and owner of Cedar River Linen and Design. Uh, and so I haven't been able to um, get on and make a video since my <laughs> shop announcement uh, because I've been really busy dying and um, shipping your linen and uh, I don't even know where to start on this because <clears throat> I've been sort of thinking through how I was going to um, put together this video. I have some notes but so much has happened since um, the shop launched on the morning of December 16th and so many people have been um, involved in the excitement and enthusiasm and talking about it and helping me um, that it's going to be really difficult for me to not get the, you know, Oscar music <laughs> drag off the screen from the list of people that I want to thank. Um, so uh, today I really don't have very much stitching at all to show. I do have a couple of projects, um, a couple things that I've been able to throw some stitches in while I've got dye um, in, in process, um, but not very much in the way of a standard floss tube. So I'm going to be uh, filming in the next week or so a whip parade because I figured that this was a good time to do that, just to sort of um, both give myself and also you guys an opportunity to see all of the projects that I have um, in process and to give me an idea of maybe what I want to prioritize working on. Um, but again, to begin with, let's back up. So December, December 16th, I um, pushed the go live button um, on the website. And prior to that, I had um, filmed a video, kind of an introductory video, talked about the origin idea, um, some of the priorities that I have in terms of how I wanted to um, run the business and things that I wanted to highlight um, with some of the colors and how I was going to be dyeing the linen and packaging and, and some sustainability things. And I asked if people were interested to just go on, um, because the website wasn't live yet, but you could put in your email um, to sign up for newsletters and information going forward. And one of the reasons that I did that was just to kind of gauge interest and to give myself an idea of how much product I should be prepping um, in anticipation of getting the website live and for orders. And at that point, when people started signing up and I started seeing the number of people that were actually logging on and including their email, and this is before we could even, <laughs> could even make any orders, I started realizing like, oh, there may be a few people. Um, but even then, I couldn't have anticipated the number of people who placed orders on the first weekend, first day, first hour uh, and so first of all thank all of you if you have placed an order with me on the Cedar River Linen website thank you it's really really humbling to um, put a product out there and to just say hey you know I I've enjoyed learning how to do this and I think that this might be something I might want to do moving forward, um, but you really don't know. And so, you know, pushing the go live button at nine o'clock that morning, it was like, <laughs> let's see. And then, and then, you know, so I was sort of babysitting the website that day just to make sure that nothing broke, to make sure that people were able to make orders, that it was a smooth process. 
Um, and so the first thing that happens is, you know, you start getting these little email notifications that somebody has made a purchase. And so within the first minute, it was like, boop, you know, an email. I was like, wow, somebody ordered, yay. And then about 10 seconds later, it was like, <laughs> there, were, there were more emails. Um, and so then that sort of started the fun of, of the day. Uh, and as uh, you know, I, I won't go into specific numbers, but uh, when I had anticipated, I, I thought I was giving myself enough time. I said, okay, I'm anticipating that when you place your order, it's going to be between two and three weeks before I can get your order shipped to you. I didn't want to pre dye a ton of linen, especially with certain counts, you know, it's difficult to get 40 count, difficult to get 36 count. So I had plenty, half plenty, but I didn't want to just start dyeing a ton of red and then have people be like, oh, what am I going to use this red for? Um, and I just wasn't sure what, what the orders were going to look like or anything like that. So I had prepped and gotten some inventory ready to go right away. Uh, nowhere near enough. <laughs> so then it turned into, and I'm going to just say this right off the bat. None of this is a complaint. I am so grateful and so excited that everyone was excited, enthusiastic. I'm going to explain kind of what the, what our house looked like for the first couple of weeks after it started, because it was all hands on deck zero to 60 in zero seconds. And my learning curve was like this. So for everybody who was patient about their orders and that we made mistakes to begin with at continuing to do so. Um, but so anyway, as I'm describing this, do not hear this as any kind of a I'm complaining or oh, I'm working so hard. It, nothing like that. I am extremely happy, excited, thrilled. Um, but because a lot of those orders were not, you know, there were, there was, there was so much volume in the way of individual orders. We really, I really needed to get some additional help in here. So to begin with, um, my friend Kelly and her video, her YouTube channel is Minimalism in the Making. She lives here in West Seattle, just, you know, maybe 15 minutes away from my house. And she amazingly volunteered to come and work for me, um, kind of just out of the blue. I'm, I'm like, I will happily give you all my money if you can help me. And she just showed up. She just kind of dropped everything that she was doing and came over and started helping me uh, cut bulk linen, surge bulk linen, whatever I needed her to do, she was just available there to do it. And so amazing, amazing that she um, was willing to do that and willing to sort of endure my, uh, you know, immediate excitement, but also kind of panic intensity. She's been a super good sport about it. So um, now that things are a little more, ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm the team. <laughs> so I'm the one that's, um, so, so that, you know, other folks that have come in don't have to be here quite so much. But for the first couple of weeks, it was like, my house was just full of people. So my parents uh, who were incredible, they just showed up. They were like, yeah, whatever. Do you get used to go grocery shopping? You want us to make boxes? You want us to my dad helped out with building some incredible um, additional drying uh, system that I have, which is really cool. Maybe at some point I'll show you. Um, adding additional shelving into the fulfillment room, cutting room that I have upstairs. Um, my sister showed up and just started ironing linen, <laughs> which was very helpful on the day that she came and did that. She came for a couple days. Um, my mother-in-law came and helped. My husband has been incredibly helpful. I'll talk about that in a moment, but my mother-in-law came a couple of days and just helped with packing, um, you know, packing orders and folding linen and all of the things that you realize need to go into 
like each of those details and and because we just weren't quite sure what that process was going to look like kind of making it up as we went um so and my husband is great like i i'm the sort of you know follow simple instructions lift heavy objects person that's that's my that's my <laughs> that's my full-time job which i also still have by the way um but he is very good at uh, kind of thinking through um, like the workflow piece of this. Like what's, what's that going to look like? How are we going to maximize your efficiency when it comes to putting, um, you know, getting the linen through the dyeing process to the drying process to you know and i can i can think through those things but as far as the actual online orders packing lists um fulfillment needs in terms of yardage individual pieces and taking the information that you guys put onto the website and in the way of orders and looking at what i'm going to need to have completed by x date in order to meet those fulfillment deadlines, he's very good at that. And so I didn't even know that that was something that I was going to need. And probably day one or day two, he's like, you want me to make you a report? What if I made a report that looked like this? And I was like, yes, yes, that's what I need. I definitely need that. And so that I think has really helped now that we've gone through a couple of, um, of full cycles uh, it's, it's made me realize that now I can be incredibly efficient about, um, taking a batch of orders, whether it's a two week order period, um, and then starting from the beginning, going all the way through it and being able to get orders out. So hopefully moving forward, it will become a little bit less. <laughs> so to back up, um, Let me refer to my notes here because I kind of forgot how to do this whole video thing. Um, the current wait time that is listed on the website, if you were to place an order today, so today is the beginning of February, uh, the anticipated wait time that I have listed is still between four and five weeks. So you place an order February 1st. It, you know, I am putting to sort of manage expectations that it may take between four and five weeks before I can ship that specific order. We're running ahead of that. I'm not gonna take that off because life happens and because I really have been flat out since the 16th of December and that's not an exaggeration. Um, and again, this is not a complaint. This is me very much enjoying um, what's happening, but I am gonna have to build in a little bit more time to, to start um, taking care of some other life things. Um, so I don't want to promise that I'm going to have, you know, that you can place an order and a week later you're gonna get your, your linen shipped. It's still gonna take me um, some time before I can build in enough prepped inventory to be able to do that. As we're going through these orders and, and working through these two week cycles, I am starting to build that in. Now that I know what you guys like, now that I know what people are ordering, what kind of cuts, colors, thread counts, it's much easier for me to anticipate and to then stockpile some prepped finished inventory that will be ready to go into boxes. My ultimate goal way down the road would be that I could get an order and a week later I'm putting it in a box and it's shipping off to you. We're not there yet. It's not going to be there for a little while. But there are a few things that I want to explain about how our, my inventory works. Um, so anything that you see on the website, the only time it's going to be 
sold out for any extended period of time is if I don't have that base thread count here in my house. I'm not going to offer, so for a while, the 32 count, I did not have any 32 count on the website. And that's because I didn't have any bulk yardage here in the house. When that order from the distributor arrived here, I added that inventory back into the website and I made an announcement on Instagram, which if you're not following me on Instagram, that's a good place to follow me so that you can kind of just check in. Um, I try to make some updates. I was doing that a little less to begin with because every <laughs> every time I would make a post, there would be this like <laughs> I try to peek my head out like, hi, I'm got some orders going out. <laughs> and then I would go back and there would be like a huge stack of new orders, which is amazing, and I can't even. But I just wanted to get caught up. So I want to give information um, and be as transparent as possible about when things are going out because you guys are, you know, everyone is trusting you with your hard earned dollars. And I really understand the excitement around wanting to get something as soon as possible. So trying to communicate as much as possible, trying to work as hard as we can to get that out to you as quickly as possible. But what I'm not going to do is put something on the website that I don't even have the bulk linen to dye. Because then I'm at the mercy of Zweigart, I'm at the mercy of the distributors and shipping and supply chain and all of that. So if you see it on the website, it means that I have that thread count in stock. And I can dye it and I can cut it and I can get it sent to you. The way that the website works and the way I have it set up is that you can go in, and this is for the linen. Now, Ada is set up slightly differently, but on the linen, so let's say, for example, you go to the color Arboreal, which is, which is my green, and you go into Arboreal, you can select 28 count, 32 count, 36 count, 40 count, 46, 56 count. Those are all of the thread counts of linen that I carry. If I have that bulk linen undyed in stock, there will be availability. Now, if you go into the 40 count linen and you see that there is no quarter yard, there's no quarter yard left, but there's a half yard and there's a full yard, I tend to go into the website every couple days, if not more often, and just take a look and make sure that I'm not missing, that I don't have any zeros behind any of those numbers. Because I have the bulk linen, it's just that I've put a certain number, uh, a quantity of fat quarters, excuse me, stitchers quarters, I put a certain quantity of quarter yards, certain quantity of half yards, a certain quantity of full yards. Now I can move those things around a little bit. So let's say I have two yards of 40 count that I've put into stock into the website, but no one's really buying full yards of that particular color. I can reallocate that yardage into quarter yards, and so I'll add a few of those occasionally. So when you go onto the website and you see that I'm sold out of something and I don't have it in a quarter yard, but I do have it in a half yard, check back because it may be that I'm going to be adding or just redistributing some of those things. Maybe I've got way more orders for overcast than I do for red cedar, which is accurate. And so I've sort of redistributed some of that 40 count into the overcast column because then you can make that order. Um, I have the linen. It'll be in that next cycle of dyeing. And it's, it's not like, you, you know, I just don't have any of it. Um, so people have asked like, how do, how do we know when you get, you know, 32 count or when you get certain, you know, thread count back in stock, check Instagram, but also just go back and take a look at the site. And if you really want to know specifically, you can always email me or send me a quick uh, direct message on Instagram on the Cedar River um, linen Instagram account. 
and I'm pretty good about responding. Email's a little tougher because I've always got my phone with me, and so I can I can see that it's harder to come in to the office and you know when I'm wearing <laughs> gloves up to my elbows. I don't tend to spend a ton of time every day on my desktop computer looking through those emails. So I check them every day. I check the email every day just to make sure that there aren't any really pressing questions or problems. Um, but a, a faster way, if you just want to know like, hey, I, are you going to be, it looks like you're out of quarter yards of 40 count overcast. Uh, I can usually go on and I can adjust it now. if I am starting to sort of dwindle out of 40 count and I've already got orders lined up for those, I'm not going to then continue to add more 40 count, right? So once the 40 count bulk is gone, if I don't have any already, you know, I've got it on order, but I'm on a wait list. I, you know, have a certain amount of yardage. We're fine for now, but for, as an example, that's when I would be listing things as sold out. So I don't list any counts that I don't physically have in stock in-house, but I will occasionally move available cuts to other columns, other colors, based on sold out status and order popularity. Uh, okay. So as I was talking about, sort of a fulfillment cycle just so that you know what's happening here when you place an order. We'll take this die cycle for example. This morning I just went and dropped off. I had to get one of those big rolling totes <laughs> to bring out to load up to, to go and bring into the post office. So a very large quantity of orders went out this morning and over the last day or two the shipping notifications have gone out that's me printing the shipping labels so that we can place that onto all of the boxes so when you see when you see a shipping notification at two in the morning it means that i'm up at two in the morning printing shipping labels I'm not complaining it's just that's how that happens uh, so now that all, that big order just went out, and that was for the majority of orders that were placed before the 14th of January. So it was orders placed between January 1st, for the most part. There's, there's sometimes there's a couple of outliers, and that could be just because of the order size or the time timing of when they were placed or. Maybe there was an issue, like right now, there was an issue with um, 28 count albarium. There was a, a couple of pieces that I had dyed that I wasn't happy with, and so they were in the last rotation. Should have gone out, but there are a couple of customers that are going to be missing that particular, just as an example. And they'll be in the next, like the very beginning of this next grouping. But with the exception of like three or four orders, everything that was placed between January 1st and January 14th has been shipped. So now the die cycle starts over again, which means that I look at every order that's come in between January 15th and February 1st. We've pulled all of those packing lists. My husband kindly created a report for me that shows all of the quarter yards, half yards, full yards in every thread count, in every color, and it tells me exactly what I need to dye for this two week order fulfillment period. So January 15th through February 1st, approximately. So I make sure that I have enough bulk linen cut and surged. I cut it in one yard increments and I surge it. Because if I don't surge it ahead of time, then I end up with all of these strings. It's like my, you know, my dyeing room ends up turning into a giant ort jar with all of the linen threads that sort of come off the edges. So we 
serge it beforehand, make sure that I have enough, create a dye schedule so that on one or two particular days I'm dyeing all arboreal, lots of different thread counts so that those can all dry, they can all be processed together. And as those are in dye process, I can also start taking the dried linen. It does not get, it, it hangs dry. So it doesn't have any drying shrinkage. We don't throw it into a drying dryer or anything like that. It just hangs to dry. We're able to start pressing that and get it pressed, tagged. Um, but my husband's very good at explaining you know, he, he sort of introduced me to the concept of transition costs. So every time you change what you're doing, so let's say I stop dying and I just go in and start cutting a whole bunch of things so that I can fulfill like 10 orders. That takes time. So it's more efficient to dye everything all at once. Press things maybe, if you can, interspersed in between when you're waiting for the dye to cycle. And once everything is pressed, dyed, ready to go, then we start cutting. We cut, the, we cut the linen down into the sizes that we need, and then we serge it. And once it's surged, pressed, everything's finished, it gets folded, all of that is ready to go, and then we start fulfilling those orders. And we box everything up. So from January 15th to February 1st, those orders will probably end up getting boxed and completed and filled the second week of, you know, the end, second, third week of February is when all of that will start. So that's why it takes that window of time. So if you placed an order January 15th, it's probably going to be February 15th before that one goes out, just realistically. If you placed it on February or January 31st, then you sort of, you're going to be kind of at the end of that order cycle and so you're going to be at the beginning of the fulfillment cycle. This is probably not, I'm not explaining this very well. But all of those things take time so I'm not going to stop, move forward, grab an order out and then uh, and fulfill it. Which is why when you ask or you'll email and say hey you can just ship those all together that's okay but I'm probably not going to be able to go forward and grab your most recent shipment to ship it with the one that would be going out now. So in some cases, I'm just gonna ship them individually if you've made multiple orders. If they're close enough and I haven't done anything with them yet, great. Otherwise, they kinda of have to go out in the, in the sequence that they were placed just because of the way that we are operating that, or the way that I'm operating that. So again, slowly adding stock in with each one of those die cycles so that we can start to close that gap down and make it a little bit more um, immediate in terms of when you place the order to when I can actually get it shipped. Hopefully that makes sense. I've just been droning on about this for half an hour now. Um, so yeah, it seems to be working okay. Uh, I am very open to getting email. I want to make you, I want, to, I want you to get what you want. And so if we have made an error in what has gone into your box, um, please email. I'm not going to be like the angry soup guy from Seinfeld. <laughs> if we made a mistake, um, we'll fix it. We're more than happy to fix it. And for those of you who have reached out, I think hopefully you you would agree that we try to be as as uh, responsive as possible and make sure that we are are helping you to get exactly what you want and what you thought that you were getting. Um, but with that said, there are a couple of things. So um, we always send, I said the we, the, the royal we. <laughs> I made a decision when um, starting up the shop that we were going to include tracking. I'm always going to include tracking on your package. When you get notification that your order has been delivered, I see the same information that you do. So and, and as a consumer, 
and purchasing lots of cross stitch stuff from lots of different shops and have gotten shipping notification where post office, the U.S. Postal Service is kind of notorious for saying, your order is in your mailbox. It was dropped on or at your mailbox on such and such this time. And you get so excited and you run out and you look and it's not there. Which is super disappointing. I know. And all I would say is especially, it seems to, it seems to be more common on weekends. If you get that notification from the postal service, and I don't work for the postal service. I'm just saying as a customer, I've had this happen before. Um, it'll say it's been delivered. You go out, it's, it hasn't been delivered give it a day or two. Because in some cases, it's either the postal carrier gave some kind of a notification, but then they maybe dropped it in the wrong mailbox, and it it takes a day or two for it to sort itself out. Or for the postal carrier, maybe they got it got too late in the day, and they ended up just going back to the terminal. And it was supposed to have been delivered, but it wasn't. So not you know knock on wood not to be superstitious about this so far there have been a, a handful of folks who have had that experience where either the postal carrier put it into the wrong box and so I got an email saying it said that, that it was delivered but it wasn't I haven't seen it I don't know where it is we'll make it we'll make it right we'll figure it out so I want to make sure that people understand that, that that's that's part of doing business. We will do what we can to try and ameliorate that in, in whatever way that we can, but give it a day or two because sometimes it will show up. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is that, and this is completely unrelated to shipping. Well, not, not necessarily. This is, this is more related to the payment side of things. I use Shopify as my web host. So Shopify, is essentially a, a service that online sellers can use where you build your website. They have templates where you can build your website, but you use their payment processing arm <laughs> to run all the payments through. So when you pay at cedarriverlinen.com for your linen, you're actually either paying because I offer PayPal, you can pay through PayPal, or you can you can pay through the Shopify website. Shopify is the one that they are the big entity that takes your payments. So if you enter a credit card, if you use Shop Pay, there are a number of other payment methods that you Apple Pay is another one that they will use. It all gets processed through the Shopify website. So it means that if you've used Shopify. If you use another website, you may not know it. Like Evertote is actually a Shopify website. Um, uh, Lindy Stitches is a Shopify website. And and then there are some completely unrelated, like non-cross-stitch shops that also are hosted by Shopify. I mean, thousands of them. Because it's a really good engine. It's a very good website. It's very stable. It's a good domain. So every time a payment gets processed through them, they take a, a little percentage of it and then they forward the re the remainder of it to the individual business. But it means that if you have set up your shipping address differently from your billing address, or if you're using a card that maybe belongs to, like let's say you purchased something for a family member for Christmas and you had it shipped to, to them and somehow it saved those settings. Make sure that when you are purchasing something, and this goes not just for me, but for anybody, look at your confirmation at the end and double check that your shipping and billing address are correct because they are that's how I get your your shipping information. That's how I know where to send your order. I don't have any control over it. I can edit that. If you see it and catch it and email me, we can work through it. But it's kind of a fraud protection too for you so that if you if your credit card gets used to purchase a product someplace uh, they can't just ship it 
randomly to themselves and use your money to buy something for themselves. So there have been a couple of instances where people are like, you know, they use the sort of express checkout methods and the billing and shipping addresses have been slightly different. So that's just kind of a word to the wise. Um, if you have, again, a problem like that, you can always get in contact with me. I can't change your billing address. If you use a credit card, the credit card and the billing address are interlinked. Those are tied up and that's something that I cannot change. And that again is a identity theft fraud protection thing that's for you. These are all things that are super interesting to me that I have been learning about as I've gone through this. Again, learning curve. So, and the last thing I would say is everyone I really feel like has been so positive and so excited and so kind and so encouraging and very um, understanding that I'm learning and I'm new at this and so the emails that I've gotten have been incredibly kind and just asking a question, excitedly asking questions about when their things are going to get here. I love it. It's totally fine. You can email me about whatever you like. If you're frustrated because something showed up that was wrong, we're going to fix it. And so I, the only thing I would say is that when, when you hit the send button, just remember that this is the face that's going to open your email. <laughs> So we'll fix it. We'll make it. We'll make it okay. We really haven't had very many of those, but um, you know, it's for fun. We're doing this for for fun, and it's your hard-earned dollars, and we understand that. And I want to make sure that you get exactly what you want. But um, yeah, patience. Okay. Uh. I've gotten, one of the things that was so incredible too is getting um, questions from shop owners, whether it's online shops or brick and mortar shops about whether or not I'm going to sell to shops, to sell wholesale to shops so that they can resell our London. Um, that is something that I'm not quite ready for. Kind of got caught off, you know, on my back, back foot. Uh, out, out of the gate like we talked about so to make sure that we got all of those orders out that really was my focus um, and so moving forward uh, that may be something that I do but there are a few considerations that I need to really kind of think through one of the one of the things that I can control over uh, w selling directly to customers is how I package that product and what it gets shipped in. So as you know, I don't ship in plastic. Uh, I try as hard as I can to use um, recyclable or compostable products. So like the branded tissue paper that you may have seen or that you received with your package, that's actually compostable. It's got like soy ink on it. Um, it's very, it's pretty reasonable actually. But everything, you know, we're trying as hard as we can to either have things that you can reuse or things that you can can put in the recycle. So if I were to sell to um, other online shops, I don't I don't really know that I want to tell them how to run their business. Um, but it will be a consideration when I'm sort of moving forward. Is it going to be a place where people can walk in as a brick and mortar and purchase? Um, the, those products, but but right now, just the volume and what I am physically capable of dyeing, prepping, and getting ready to go is not where I think I would need to be in order to fulfill both retail orders in a timely manner and also be able to sell to shops. And because, I again, I do still have another job for now, um, until that changes... I don't think that I'm going to be um, immediately able to to do that. Now, I, I would love to, and there have been some suggestions of doing maybe like a, uh, like a trunk show, or um, I'm considering down the road uh, 
possibly, you know, the, the linen and design, the design part. <laughs> there is a plan. Um, and it'll probably involve doing some reproduction sampler charts, um, hopefully maybe hosting a retreat maybe once a year. But those are things down the road. This, uh, I, I want to make sure that we get this piece of it well underway and make some decisions uh, moving forward that uh, are going to be able to be well thought out and to make sure that we just don't, you know, we don't want to mess stuff up. We want to make sure that it's done, that it's done well and that um, you have the time, the energy, the ability to do it the way that we'd like to see it done. As for designers, I've had a few designers reach out. Thank you so much. That has been incredibly humbling. Um, and, and asking kind of the same thing. Are you going to be selling to shops? And I uh, completely understand designers, I, I would assume, want to know that if they include my linen on a chart, that they that their customers are going to be able to access the linen. Um, what I will say is that the colors that I have in the shop now, they're the initial palette of five colors, those are not going to go away. Those will remain the same. I'm doing my best to keep them as consistent as possible. So unless something changes dramatically with the, the dye that I use, um, those should be, as long as I'm in business, those colors should be available. Um, I have not ruled out the idea of curating a kit or working with a designer specifically if they need, you know, I, I don't know yet. I just have been kind of saving those emails and letting folks know I'm very interested and, and I just need to get through these first few months to kind of get my feet under me and figure out exactly where we're going to go from here. So, um, uh, you know, you, you kind of hope that that is something that people would be, that would they would want to do, but it, it all happened much faster than I think I was anticipating. Um, so, that said, there are some people that I kind of want to just really thank. And I have one of the good things about having your sort of hands in the die and, and being in a, you know, I've had lots of time to watch Flosstube and um, sort of follow Instagram. I try to, I try not to look at that too, too much, just because it's kind of a time suck for me. Um, but floss tube has been super nice to have just, you know, I always have it kind of all in the background and listening and then people will talk about the linen and, um, I like to see what people think and how it's showing on camera. Um, and any comments, concerns, any challenges that, that people may have had. Um, but that, I can't thank you guys enough for how, um, you know, people, I mean, I talk about people's products because I really like using them and it's fun. Um, I, I also don't have a massive number of people that I'm talking to, you know, I mean, we have a, we have a few thousand people that come and, and hang out and watch when I make a video, but, um, I'm going to forget people. I'm going to forget people. So it's, it, I'm not trying to exclude anybody. And I may just not have even seen because there were enough people that talked about our, our, the linen that, um, I may end up missing some folks, but to begin with Brenda and Laura, before the shop launch, Laura had been here at my house. She took some linen back with her, um, to give to Brenda and they, talked about it on their channel and I absolutely know that that the the success enthusiasm exposure 
spotlight that was put onto um, the business would not have happened had it not been for Laura and Brenda. And they do that for so many people in this community and they don't do it for money and they don't do it for any other reason than they love cross stitch and they are incredibly kind and generous with their time and with their influence. And I cannot, I don't even know, I don't, I don't have the right words for it. To, to thank them so much for how much they give back to the people who make a living really. I mean, and I haven't up until this point, I have, this is not something that I ever thought that I would, you know, I thought this would be just something that I would do kind of for fun and on the side. But it's like life changing, honestly. So Carol, Saltbox, Stitcher, same thing. Talked about once she got her, she, she placed an order and talked about it. Teresa Kogut, did an unboxing of my product. Colleen and Cheryl Stitching with the Sisterlies talked about it. Becca Sambri Stitches, before I even opened the shop, had me come onto her channel and did an interview with the floss tuber, which is so fun and so nice and incredibly helpful. Ellen Reed, Maximum Cross Stitch, has been she was probably one of the very first people that knew that I was going to do this and has been cheerleader number one. <laughs> Just incredible. Susan Stanley, who sat down with me for, you know, two and a half hours in a coffee shop here in Seattle a couple of months before I launched just to go over and look at the colors that I had started producing and to sort of talk about it and just get excited about it. And how amazing is that? And <clears throat> Betsy Klager and uh, people that have shown it on their Instagram channels and people that have started projects with it already. And uh, I think, uh, again, there is going to be, there's a huge number of people that just, Jeanette, uh, Janine McGowan ordered and showed it on her channel. Michelle Bendy, actually, who sat with me at the Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit, actually stitched a little whale on a piece of my linen. You guys didn't even know about it because it was still secret at the time. Erin, um, two martini stitcher, she showed it on her channel. She was also sitting with us, so she was kind of in the in the lead pack. Um, so it's just, it's taken this whole community of people and again, I'm so grateful and I'm so excited about it and I just am, you know, I don't know what to say other than just thanks. So, um, I... I'm going to show just a couple of things that, because uh, there were some questions about, you know, I love this green. Oh, my, my, of course, my friends Nancy and Jenny, the bougie stitchers, uh, talked about they weren't quite sure what to stitch with the green. Jenny was talking about she wasn't quite sure what to stitch with the green. I think that there's, you know, there are a few different things to people, and it's for lots of different types of stitching. I don't think it's just for sampler stitchers, but it is kind of a good sampler green. So I wanted to show a few things that I've been working on. I did show in the past on my last floss tube video, I showed one project. So this Scarlet Letter uh, Peacock Unicorn a Badger. The background of this, if you look at the background of the chart itself. It's actually all stitched in DMC 936, which is an olive green. So this is a piece of 32 count. And I started this before, you know, when I was still kind of in the, in the practice stages of, um, so this is where I'm at on this, but this just, this green basically just means that I won't have to stitch the background. So if you look right here, you can see that there's a little patch of 936. 
that's DMC 936. I just sort of did a, a test just to get the tone. And you can see that there is some modeling in here. It's a little bit of variegation, not much. Um, but that is an idea. I'm stitching this two strands over two. And it is, uh, again, it's 32 count. So my fabric tends to be a little smoother on the bigger counts in terms of just the consistency of the color. When it gets into some of the higher counts, which I'll show you in a moment, there is just a little bit more variation, but it's not like heavily, heavily modeled. It's just more of a, I guess kind of an aged. Um, but anyway, these colors are kind of fun, kind of pretty, having a good time with that. Eventually when I actually start stitching again, I'll be looking forward to getting back to that. Um, that's another reason why I'm keeping that estimate a little bit longer, that estimate window, because I have to I have to be able to still stitch a little bit, right? Plus I'm going to a retreat in April, so. Um, this chart, this is an idea, and I bought this, I don't know, six months, five months ago, when I was thinking about figuring out how to get this green. Um, this is another reason why I wanted to come up with a good green. So this is by the Scarlet Letter. This is the New England sampler. And the original chart was worked on green Lindsay Woolsey, which I think you can get from the Scarlet Letter. Um, Cause I think she does sell kits, but uh, I decided to try see what it would look like on a piece of arboreal. So this is 40 count. And as you can see on the smaller counts, there is a little bit more variegation. So that is again, 40 count arboreal. And I'm using um, kind of a little bit of a modified Overa palette. This is the Swat Alger. I had some that were called for, but I didn't have all of them. And so I kind of used what I had and what, what was close. And I haven't gotten to the red part yet, but I think it's going to be really pretty. I really like this chart because it's got that huge W. It's like the world's biggest W. Anyway, I like it. It's a, it's a cool... And green is notoriously difficult to photograph and film, but this is actually looking pretty, pretty close. It's looking a little more blue on, on screen, but. And the funny thing is I had already started that. I think I showed it to Ellen on Instagram and she said, oh, she said, Carol talked about your, that your, that would, that this chart would look good on your green fabric. I was like, what? Sure enough, I went back and looked, Carol said, oh, and this is so funny too. When Carol was talking about, she showed, she showed the linen and she was showing, so I have a, a very light color called Albarium. It's white, it's almost white. It's kind of a chameleon color. It tends to pull a certain tone depending on what you stitch on it. But so she held it up and she said, this is Albarium. And her husband from off camera goes, who, me? <laughs> so funny. I had never thought of it. Albarium. Yeah, six feet under, she said. It's very funny. I'm going to check a lot of that. Uh, the other one that I am stitching, and this is, she even signed it for me, uh, is Ellen Reed's Maximum Cross Stitch. There's always room. Sorry, my dog is whining. He really wants to get out of the room. Uh, I had also started this way before uh, the shop launched, and here are the... Is this right? Yeah. Those are the colors. How pretty are those? 
so pretty. All the Roxy Flosco colors called for, except for the um, oh, let me take a little. Sorry. The house I used a different color because I have a gray house, and so I instead of using ochre, I used a different Roxy Flosco gray. That's where I am with that, and I'm stitching this on overcast. Um, and it is 46 count. Fairly certain. 46 count. Yeah. So, it's cute. And you can buy this chart, Ellen. Uh, sells this chart on her website, which is MaximumCrossStitch.com, and you can also get it on the Leo and Roxy. You can also get it on the Evertote site, Evertote.ca, which is where I got this. This is another one of her charts, The Ravens at Castle Kerr. That big plaid tartan raven is so amazing and I got the floss pack to go with it because I think there were a couple of colors in here that I didn't have but you can always use it right um Becca has a couple of uh, models that she stitched on Tefra, which is one of my colors. And she, I think one of them is, uh, she just did a little sneak peek on her Instagram and it may be for a market release, so I don't have it. Um, but check out her site. She's been very kind and supportive about sharing uh, about my linen and she's, I love Becca. Um, okay, and then the last one, this is also overcast. This is 46 count. And Jacob just released his 2023 stitch along, which is this, Reaching Skyward. Which is so beautiful. I have no idea when I'm going to have time to stitch it, but... Um, I think I may go with, these are both Roxy Flosco colors, so this green, I know it looks really bright, but when it actually gets stitched with just a single strand, it's really, it's a beautiful soft green, and this is Grinch, this was part of the, um, the holiday countdown box, which by the way, for this year just went on sale today. And then this color is called Redacted, and it is a dark, dark brown. I know it looks kind of black here on the screen, but it actually, as a matter of fact, is... Let's see if I will focus a little bit better. This way. It's a beautiful, beautiful dark, dark brown, and I think it was a one-of-a-kind, so I ended up getting like 10 skeins of it, which I think will be enough. But I'm going to do a couple of little test um, blocks on the side just to take a look and see what that would look like. And I think what I would do is I probably would end up just doing the lighter bits in green. I may even add a third color into this, but I think it would be really pretty. So, um, it's an hour, so I'm going to go back and edit through this a little bit. Uh... Mm, the majority of the time I'm not going to be just talking about the shop. Um, my next video I'm going to actually, as I said, do a whip parade and so I'll probably just do a very brief update if there's anything that needs to be talked about. Other, other than that, I may end up just having a separate video about the shop in the future. I'm not sure yet. But thank you all so much and um, please let me know if you have any questions, problems, concerns, and please share 
Um, even just with me, if you don't want to post it on social media, I would love to see what people are stitching on. It's really fun to see this linen out in the wild and to see all of the things that people are using it for. So that might be kind of a fun thing is to pop in some photos, you know, toward the end of videos of what people are stitching on and what they're having fun with if, if they're willing to do that. So we also have a hashtag on Instagram. It's just hashtag Cedar River Linen. And you can follow us on Instagram. And I usually will repost on my Trixie Tricycle uh, Instagram as well. So I know I've forgotten a million things, but it's okay because we'll probably make another video here in the next few weeks. Uh, I think what I will do is at the end of each of those die and ship cycles, that's probably the window of time that I will have to make a video. And then we'll be right back into it. So anyway, I hope you guys are well and you're um, getting some good stitching in and I look forward to talking to you again soon. So that's it. So be safe, be nice to each other, and have a happy day. Bye!